Okay, so we're going to be looking at long division problems with two-digit divisors and three to four-digit dividends. Now, in order to solve problems like this with larger numbers, you need to use compatible numbers in order to find your estimated quotient or answer before you can begin. Because if you're looking at this problem without estimating your answer, 42 into 315 is very hard uh, difficult to determine because 42 is a very large number and I don't know multiples of 42 to take a guess as to how many times 42 divides into 315. Okay, so I have written this up. If you don't need these steps, you can fast forward this, but this is um, my uh, thinking to solve these kinds of problems. So steps to solve long division problems. You always want to begin using compatible numbers to find your estimated quotient or answer, okay? So as a reminder, if you're not familiar with compatible numbers, compatible numbers are basically fact family numbers. You need to be familiar with your multiplication and division facts in order to be fluent in this. So if you don't know your multiplication facts, you will need to use your multiplication chart. But that is, again, the advantage of knowing your multiplication facts. So if you have numbers such as 4 and 36, you should immediately know that 4 and 36 are, in fact, fact family numbers because 4 times a number is 36. Okay, so if you want to see this connection, you can think to yourself, oh, I know, 4 times 9 is 36. So these are, this is why this is called, these are compatible numbers. So we have to think to ourselves, the smaller number 4 times another number is 36. Okay, so 4 times 9 is 36. So these are fact family numbers. And we can think of it the same way as saying 9 times 4 is 36. And then using our uh, division facts, 36 divided by 4 is 9, or 36 divided by 9 is 4, right? So that's why we call this a fact family. If you notice, these three numbers repeat themselves, right? So there's 4, 9, and 36, 4, 9, and 36, 4, 9, and 36, 4, 9, and 36, okay? Okay, so that is our first step in order to solve a long division problem. So we're just, um, I'm going to go ahead and go on to the second part. So number two, once you find an estimated quotient, that is going to be your starting point to solve the actual problem. Um, and then again, this estimated quotient, I have a little asterisk here, because the estimated quotient is exactly that. It's an estimate. So the numbers might not be exact, but it is close to the actual quotient that you will get. Okay, so again, this is just your starting point. I'll go back here and talk about if your number is too big or too small. Okay, number three, when you are done solving the actual problem, you are going to check your final answer by multiplying the quotient times your divisor and then adding your in your remainder. Um, and then uh, when you add that all up, you should get your dividend. And I've color coded this if you are not familiar with the uh, math vocabulary, division vocabulary. So quotient here is green. This is your quotient. It's the answer to your division problem. I did highlight the remainder a different color just so that you can see the process here to checking your work. The divisor is the number you are dividing by, right? So it's on the outside of the house. Um, and then your dividend is the number which, which I call inside of the house. So the dividend here is 39. And then obviously your remainder here is three, okay? So what we do is if this, this is a very simple problem, but just so you can see, if this is a division problem that you were to solve, you want to make sure you did it correctly. So you use this formula. You take your quotient 9, you multiply it by your divisor. <clears throat> so 9 times 4 is 36. And then you add in your remainder at the very end. So remainder 33. So you're going to add in your, 30, your 3 here. And then when you add 36 plus 3, you're going to get 39. And take a look. 39 and 39. That is this, that's the your dividend, right? So when you're doing this check, 
when you come up with your answer here, it should equal your dividend or the number in the house. If your number here is does not match your dividend here in your actual problem, then you most likely made an error. So that tells you to go back to check your, your, your work from the beginning. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and apply these three steps to these problems. All right, so number one is 42 divided into 315. So what we're going to do first is we are going to find compatible numbers to estimate our, our quotient. So I am going to round this number 42 uh, down to a number that I can easily multiply. So 42, I want to think to myself, is 42 closer to the number 40 or is it closer to the number 50? And when we're rounding right to the nearest 10, you want to look at this uh, the number in the ones column. So this is a two. And we think about rounding, our rounding roller coaster. Two is not five or larger, so the four stays the same, right? So 42 is closer to 40. And again, if you were to draw a number line, right? Here's 40, here's 50, 42 is right here. 42 is so much closer to the number 40 than it is all the way to the number 50. Okay, so I'm gonna round 42 to 40. I always want to round to a number that ends in a zero because I can easily multiply 40 times any number, right? Or I can use mental math. All right, so now I have four um, as my first compatible number. So when I'm looking at my compatible numbers, I don't want to really worry about the zero because I can multiply anything times zero, but I'm going to look at the four. I need to think about my dividend or the number inside of the house now. 315, I'm gonna, I want you to always to take a look at the first two numbers. And I'm gonna look at the number 31. So you need to ask yourself, does four times any number equal 31? Okay, no, there is no number that equals 31. So now I need to think to myself, okay, if I could change this number 31 to another number, that is a multiple of four, you can go ahead and change it. So I'm gonna to think to myself, four times seven is 28, four times eight is 32. Now 32 is a lot closer to 31 because it's the difference of just one number. And it's okay that the number is, is larger, okay? Because again, we're just working on an estimate. So I wanna change this number 31 to a 32 because 32 and four are fact family numbers, okay? All right, so then we have to go ahead and determine what this other fact family number is because that is gonna be our quotient. Okay, so four times eight is 32, okay? So what I wanna do then is I wanna take this 31 here and I wanna change it to 32 right? Because I want it to be fact family numbers so I can solve this easily. So the 31 changes to a 32. Okay, now the five here, I'm going to go ahead and round just to a zero. I don't care that it's a five. I don't need to round up. This one, the number the ones place, this five is just going to be a zero. Okay, so when you look at this, I've now created compatible numbers. I can easily divide 40 into 320. So if I look at the four and I look at 32, I know four divides into 32 eight times, right? So this number is 40, not four, but I know I can multiply any number, right, times 10 because four times 10 is 40, right? Okay, so four times eight is 32. So if I put the eight up here, I wanna to think to myself, where does this eight, where should I place this eight? What you wanna do is you wanna take a look at your dividend and then ask yourself, four does not divide into three. This number is too small. I can't divide 40 into three. I cannot divide 40 into the number 32 because again, 40 is a bigger number than 32 but I can definitely divide 40 into 320, right? So that is where that eight belongs above the zero. And again, this is just my estimate, but good practice, okay? So this is my estimated quotient, 
Okay, this is my guess to what the answer is to the actual problem. So the reason again why we make this estimated quotient is if you're just looking at this, right? Most of us are gonna have no idea how many times 42 divides into 315. But here, this is our starting point. Okay, we think our answer is going to be about eight. Sometimes this will be the exact answer. Sometimes I might have to make this number a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, depending on what happens here when I do my long division. Okay, so now that I have my, I use compatible numbers to find my actual quotient. And now I'm gonna use my estimated quotient as the starting point to solve the actual problem. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this number eight and we're going to go ahead and we're going to place it up here. I'm not actually going to use pen. I'm going to use pencil in case that's not the exact answer. So again, the 8 is going to go above the 5. Because again, if we talk to ourselves, 42 doesn't divide into 3. 42 does not divide into 31. But 42 will divide into 315. So I need all three numbers here to make this division happen. Right? So there is my 8. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and do my steps to, to long division, right? Does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers, divide, multiply, subtract, check, and bring down. Okay, so 42, so I've divided already, and then I'm going to multiply. 42 times 8. Now I need to go ahead and work off to the side here. I'm going to do some multiplication. 2 times 8 is 16. Regroup my 1. 4 times 8 is 32, plus 1 more is 33. Okay, so if I have 8 here, 42 times 8 is 336. Now, can I subtract 336 from 315? No, I cannot. This number is larger than 315, right? I have 300s, I have 110, and I have 310s here. So 8 is too big of a number. So we have to kind of use our common sense here. And if not, you can go back to our, your, um, your steps here, right? If the first number in our estimated quotient is too big, this number is too big because I can't take this 42 times eight, I can't take 30, 336 away. So if my number is too big, try reducing the number and trying again, meaning, if 8 is too big, if I make this number one number smaller, then maybe my product of 42 times 7 will work, and I'll be able to subtract it from 315. All right, so let's go ahead and give that a go. So I'm going to erase the 8, and I'm going to try 7, because 8 wasn't the actual answer. All right, so I'm going to change that to a 7, and I'm going to try again. 42 times 7. Okay, 2 times 7 is 14, regroup by 1. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 1 more is 29. 294. Well, look at that. 294 is smaller than 315, so I can actually then do my next step here, which is subtracting. Right? Okay, so 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 minus 9 I cannot do. 9 is larger than 1, so I need to regroup. The 3 is going to become a 2, and I'm going to make the 1 an 11. 11 minus 9 is 2. 2 minus 2 is nothing. Okay, I have no number to bring down because I used all three of these numbers here, so my remainder is 21. Okay, now that is my actual answer uh, quotient to the original problem. So now I'm going to go to step number 3, and this is such an important part here. Because we always want to do well when we do our homework and when we do assessments. You always want to check to make sure you don't make any silly errors. So we're going to go look at step number three. Checking your final answer by multiplying the quotient times your divisor and then adding in your remainder at the very end. And whatever that number is, we want to hope it's that number that's inside the house, our dividend. Okay, so we're going to apply that here. I'm going to take my quotient, which is the 7, and I'm going to take my divisor, which is 42. So 42 times 7. Yes, I have this here already. I can look at this and check my multiplication to make sure I didn't make a silly error, or I can rewrite it and do it again. 
Okay, so 42 times 7. I'm going to go ahead and just check my work here just so I don't have to write it over again. 2 times 7 is 14. I regrouped my 1. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 1 more is 29. Okay, so I'm good there. So 42 times 7, 294. And the last part is to add in my remainder of 21. So I need to do that here, right? 42 times 7, add in my remainder. 4 plus 1 is 5. 9 plus 2 is 11. 2 plus 1 is 3. So 315, that should be this number here, which is my dividend. And if I erase all my regrouping and everything, there it is. It matches. So I know that I did this problem correctly. All right, so we're going to try another one. Um, if you would like to try this on your own, I suggest you pause the video and then come back and check your work. All right, so here we go. So 36 divided into 288. We're first going to work with compatible numbers. So I need to round 36. 36 is closer to 40 than it is to 30. So I'm going to round this up to 40. Now I have a four again. So that's my fact family number I want to look at. I want to look at this four and I'm going to look at this number 28. Remember, remember, remember the first two numbers inside of your dividend. Okay. So I have a four times a number equals 28. Now, is there a fact, is this a fact family? Actually, it is. I don't even have to change this number 28 because I know 4 times 7 is 28. So this number, I don't have to change at all. So the 28 is going to stay the same. But this 8 here in the 1's column, I'm going to change it to a 0. Because again, we're estimating, right? 288, I'm just rounding it down to 280. Okay. Now I can take a look at my multiplication here, my fact family, and I can solve for my estimated answer. So because I know 4 times 7 is 28, here is my 4, there's my 28. I'm going to go ahead and put the 7 up here because 40 can't divide into 2, it can't divide into 28, right? I need all three numbers here. I need 280 to make this division happen. Okay. 7 times 40, so 7 times 4 is 28, and then I add in my 0 there, right? If we do mental math, 40 times 7. Okay, so our estimated answer is about 7. Now, I'm going to use that to apply to my actual problem as my starting point. Okay, so the 7 I'm going to place up here, and I'm going to go ahead and work with my steps. So I'm dividing already. 36, I'm thinking, goes into 288 seven times. And now I'm going to multiply 36 times 7. 6 times 7 is 42. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 4 more is 25. 252. Oh, that number is smaller than 288. I'm going to go ahead and subtract. 8 times 2 is 6. 8 minus 5 is 3. 2 minus 2 is nothing. Oh, uh-oh. Look what I just realized. Haha. Uh -huh. There is a remainder of 36. So when we, I subtracted, and I need to check to make sure my remainder here is less than my divisor. But look what I discovered. If my remainder here is 36 and my divisor is 36, I can actually divide 36 into 288 one more time because if I have a remainder of 36 and I'm splitting things up in 36s, right, this number does not work. So that is why we have that check in place. So and now I wish I didn't write in pen. <laughs> Seven is too small of a number. And again, if I take a look at my notes, if my number is too small, try increasing the number and trying again. So I'm going to change the 7 to an 8. So if I'm correct here, I'm going to do 36 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48. 3 times 8 is 24. Plus 4 more is 28. There you go. Exactly. 
So 36 times 8 is 288. And then when I subtract, 8 minus 8 is 0. 8 minus 8 is 0, right? 2 minus 2 is 0. There is no remainder in this problem, okay? So now I still want to go back and check my answer, my quotient. Because I don't have a remainder, I just need to do the first step here. Multiply the quotient times my divisor. Quotient, divisor. Okay, I don't have a remainder to add in. So I'm just going to multiply those two numbers together. So I have 36 times 8. I already have it written here, so I'm just going to check my work. 6 times 8 is 48. I regroup my 4. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 4 more. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Yep. And look at there. Same number. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move on to larger numbers with four-digit dividends. 83 divides into 4,895. I need to make the 83. I need to round this to a nice even multiple of 10. 83 is closer to 80 than it is to 90 because of the 3. So 83 is going to become an 80. And now I'm going to look at this 8. And I'm going to look at 48. So 8 times, I'm looking for a fact family number, this 48, I'm going to place over here, and I want to see if I if this is a, a fact family. So I know 8 times 6 is 48. So again, I don't have to change these first two numbers because these the 48 and 8 are already fact family numbers. So 48 stays the same. The 9 and the 5, I'm going to round to zeros, right? Because again, I'm just estimating my answer. The 9 becomes a 0, and the 5 becomes a 0. Now I can easily divide 80, divide into 4,800. So 8 divides into uh, 480 six times, right? Because 80 times 6 is 480 because 6 times 8 is 48. I add in my 0 here. And then I'm going to subtract 480 minus 480 is 0. I do need to bring down this other 0, right? 80 goes into 0, 0 times. So my estimated answer is going to be about 60. Okay, so that is my starting point. This number 60 is my starting point here. So I'm going to start with the 6, and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that that'll work. So the 6 is going to, let's determine where the 6 goes. 83 does not divide into 4. It does not divide into 48, but I can divide 83 into 489. So if my estimated answer is 60, I'm going to put this 6 up here, and then I'm going to go ahead and start that division process again, right? So I just divided. Now I'm going to multiply 83 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. 8 times 6 is 48, plus one more is 49. Okay, my answer is 498. If I were to put 498 here, I can't subtract. 498 is larger than 489. So, this number up here is too big. So what should I do in order to make this number smaller? I need to reduce the 6 down just by one number, right? If my first number is too big, try reducing the number. I'm trying again. So 6 is too big. I'm going to change it to 5. And I have to start over again. Okay, so 83 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Regroup my 1. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 1 more is 41. 415. Okay, so 83 times 5 is 415. Okay, I'm not, I am not doing anything with that 5 yet, so I'm not going to look at it. I'm going to do my subtraction. 9 minus 5 is 4. 8 minus 1 is 7. 
4 minus 4 is nothing. I'm going to do my check. 74 is smaller than 83, so I'm okay there. And now I'm going to bring down my next number, which is the 5. Okay, now I'm going to start again. When I'm done bringing down a number, I go back to the top and start again. I'm going to take this divisor. I needed to divide 83 into 745. Again, I want to use compatible numbers. So if I look here, I know if 83 is close to 80, and 80 times 6 is 480, this number is 745. That's a pretty big number. If I look here at my work that I've already done, 83 times 6 is 498. If I put a 6 up here and subtract 498 from 745, I'm still going to have a really big remainder. So I think my number needs to be larger than that. So I'm going to try again. And this is another way to do it as well. If this number was 80, 80 or excuse me, 8 and 74 are not compatible numbers. Right? So 8 times a number is not 74. There's no number, right? So this is not a fact family number. If I were to change this to a number that is a fact family number of 8, I know 8 times 9 is 72, right? And this is number is 74. So 9 might be my number here. So I think that's where I'm going to start. And it might be too big, but let's see. So 83 times 9. 3 times 9 is 27. Regroup my 2. 8 times 9 is 72. Plus 2 more, so 72, 73, 74. 747. Now, I cannot subtract 747 from 745. Oh, it's just too big by a little bit. So 9 is too big. So because a 9 is too big, I'm going to drop that 9 to an 8. And I'm going to try again, right? This is called guessing and checking at this point. So 83 times 8. 3 times 8 is 24. 8 times 8 is 64. Plus 2 more is 66. 664, that'll work. I can sub subtract that from 745. So 8 is my number. 83 times 8. 83 times 8 is 664. And then I'm going to do my subtraction. 5 minus 4 is 1. 4 minus 6 I can't do. I need to regroup. This 4 becomes a 14. 14 minus 6 is 8. I'm going to check because I just subtracted. Check. 81 is smaller than 83, so I'm okay there. I don't have any other numbers to bring down, so I am done. So this now is my remainder. 58, remainder 81. Okay, now last thing. I did compatible numbers. I answered the actual problem. And now I want to make sure my answer is correct. So I'm going to do step number three again. So I'm going to take 58, just the whole number, not the remainder. So I'm going to take 58. And I'm going to multiply it by 83, right? Those two numbers we multiply together. We multiply our quotient times our divisor. Lots of multiplication. 8 times 3 is 24. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 more is 17. I put my 0 placeholder there. And then I'm going to multiply 8 times 8, which is 64. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 6 more is 46. Okay, 4 plus 0 is 4, 7 plus 4 is 11, regroup, 6, 7, 8, and 4. All right, almost done. I've multiplied my quotient times my divis divisor. I need to add in my remainder, which is 81. Oop, I'm kind of remain we're running out of room here. Let me write this up here so I don't move into my other problem. So 4,814, add in 81. 4 plus 1 is 5. 8 plus 1 is 9. 8, 4. 4,895. Look at that. I know this answer is correct because I just checked it. 
Okay, so I would suggest that you press pause, try to solve this problem on your own using compatible numbers, using the compatible number to solve, and then checking your work, and then go ahead and press play again and see how you do. Okay, so compatible numbers. 26 is closer to 30 than it is to 20, so I'm going to round this up to 30. Okay, I see a 3. I'm going to make my fact family here. I see the number 23. All right, I'm going to take these first two numbers. 3 times no number is 23. These are not fact family numbers. I need to change this 23 to a number that that is a fact family of 3. So I know 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 8 is 24. I think I'm going to go down by 1 because I'm already making 26. I've made it a 30, which is making this number bigger. So I'm going to use 7, right? Uh, so 21. I'm going to make 23. I'm going to change it to 21. So 23 is going to become 21 because now I can divide 3 into 21, right, evenly. All right, the other two numbers, the 1 and the 2, become zeros. And then I'm going to divide. 30 divides into 210 seven times. And then the 0, I can even simply just bring up, right? 30 times 70 is 2100 because 3 times 7 is 21. We add in our two zeros, right? Okay, so our estimated answer is about 70. So that is my starting point over here. I think the first number should be a 7. And again, let's talk about placement. 26 doesn't divide into 2. It do does not divide into 23, but it does divide into 231. So I'm going to place this 7 above the 1, and then I'm going to go ahead and do my next step, which is multiply. 26 times 7. 7 times 6 is 42. 2 times 7 is 14. Plus 4 more is 18. 182. That will work. This number is 231. If I were to subtract 182 from 231 and my divisor is 26, I don't know if this number is big enough. I think my remainder might be too big. So I'm going to make this 7 and 8, and I'm going to see if I can get closer to this 231. So 26 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 4 more is 20. Ah, that is closer. 231. Now, I don't know. I might be able to make this number even bigger than 8. I don't know, I might have enough room, I might not, but I'm gonna try 26 times nine. Oops, 26 times nine, and I'm gonna see what happens. Six times nine is 54. Two times nine is 18, plus five more, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. See, even I'm using my fingers. 234. Oh, this number is too big because I cannot subtract 234 from 231. So eight, is my number. So I'm going to erase the 7. I'm going to make it an 8. I already did the math here. So 26 times 8 is 208. And then I'm going to subtract, right? I'm not looking at that 2 yet. I haven't used it. 1 minus 8 I can't do. I need to regroup. 3 becomes a 2. The 1 becomes an 11. 11 minus 8 is 3. 2 minus 0 is 2. 2 minus 2 is nothing. I'm going to, going to check 23 is smaller than 26. So I'm now going to bring down my last number, which is a 2. So now I'm going to start again. How many times does 26 divide into 232? Now, I'm going to be smart here. I did a lot of work here with 26. I, I multiplied 26 times 7, times 8, and times 9. Let's see if any one of these products is close to 232. I see 182, I see 208, and I see 234. This number is too big again, 
because I cannot subtract uh, 234 from 232. So my number eight is it again. I can subtract 208 from 232. So I'm going to use this eight again. 26, I think, divides into 232 eight times, right? So eight times 26 is 208. And then I'm going to subtract. Two minus eight I can't do. I need to regroup. Uh, and then the two becomes a 12. 12 minus eight is four. Two minus zero is two. Two minus two is nothing. I'm going to check. 24 is smaller than 26. I have no other number to bring down, so that's my remainder. Okay, so this is what I believe is my exact answer, and I'm gonna do my last step. I wanna make sure my answer is correct. So I'm gonna take the whole number of my quotient and I'm gonna multiply it by my divisor. So I'm gonna take 88 times 26, and I'm gonna multiply those together. Eight times six is 48. Eight times six is 48, plus four more, so 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. Placeholder, I'm gonna cross that out because I'm done with it. And I'm gonna multiply 88 times the two. 8 times 6 is 16, or sorry, 8 times 2 is 16. Regroup my 1. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 1 more is 17. I'm going to add those two together. 8, 8, 12, 2. Okay, now, don't want to forget, I need to add in my remainder at the very end. So I'm going to take this 24. 8 plus 4 is 12 regroup. 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 1 more is 11. Regroup again. 2 plus 1 is 3. And then I'm going to bring down this 2. 2,312. I erase all my regrouping work. Same number. So again, I know that this that answer is correct. Okay, I hope that these problems have helped, has helped, have helped you.